Hi and welcome to Home Assistant How To with Bearded Tinker. Today we will be playing with the Shelly button and what a great device this is. We'll start in a couple of seconds. As always, before we go any further, I really would like to thank all the members who have joined my YouTube channel. Thank you! And also thanks to everybody who liked, subscribed or watched my videos. Thank you! And now let's get cracking with today's Shelly video. Shelly button is one of those devices that I really love from Shelly. It's so simple, but it works. And that's really all you want from such a simple device. And what the killer feature is, it has internal rechargeable battery, so you can just recharge it. No more will have problems like I have with other Zigbee buttons or switches where I have to keep a stock of various batteries. So let's talk about the Shelly button. Shelly button is what it says and only that. It provides you option to control one or multiple devices with many button press choices. You have a long, short press and multiple press. It allows you to integrate it inside Home Assistant either by using the internal Home Assistant integration, by using MQTT or Shelly for Hess. And in this video I will be talking mostly about the MQTT as I found it the most useful, but we will tackle also the internal Home Assistant integration, sort of. So let's talk about the Shelly device itself. The device is really small. It has a button and LED ring, so anytime you press it, it changes the color. Most of that can be customized through the application. It has option to be tied, so you can have it as a keychain or something like that. And this is the cover where you connect the, yes, micro USB charger, unfortunately. As you can see, it's one button with four actions. For example, in this case, one time you press it, the bedroom light toggles. The other one, the blinds are closed, third one turns fans on or off and long push turn off all lights in the apartment. And by using trigger IDs and choose what I will do later in the video, you can combine everything in a single automation. The case itself is waterproof, which is something that you also see rarely in the similar devices in the Zigbee or Z-Wave range. It cannot be soaked, but small amount of rain will not hurt it. You can charge the battery, which is something that I really do prefer with my devices and so far only Shelly motion sensor and Shelly button, if I'm not mistaken, can be recharged. Yes, there is option to use the battery for temperature and humidity sensor, but I still haven't tested that one. One of the functionalities I haven't tested, but maybe that's good for anybody having a house and a garage, is to use this small sensor to open the garage door. So let's go through the configuration process. I will not be covering in this video on how to configure the first part, which is connecting to the Wi-Fi network, because this is the same for all in each of Shelly devices. My recommendation is if you are doing it, please connect with the micro USB your Shelly button to the power, because this will prevent it from going to sleep. If it's powered on through the battery and not through the USB port, the device will go to sleep depending on the configuration, but default one is two seconds. You can prevent it, of course, by clicking the button, but as I said, it's much easier to connect it to the USB power. So what is the configuration? First thing, connect to power. Then either use your mobile phone or laptop to connect to the access point it created. First thing you need to do there is connect to Wi-Fi network. This is called the Wi-Fi client. After you have connected it to your network, we can start with the rest of the configuration process. The user interface for the button is very simple. We only have status of the battery and it's currently at 46%. If you're wondering how long the battery did last before it reached 46%, I think it's around five months. No, unfortunately also it wasn't used that much, but I did experiment and play with it. Now let's continue with the configuration. Let's look at the settings first. Here we have ability to control or disable the Wi-Fi status light. If you want to save juice or prevent power usage, you can enable this or disable this. Long push duration tells the Shelly device how long the push has to last to be considered long push. 
in the multi-push configuration, you define what is the wait period between pushes to consider something multi-push. Remain wake is used to determine how long the push button will stay awake and wait for the UI or other commands before it goes to sleep. The default is 2 seconds. By reducing this number you will definitely conserve the battery time. So either put it at 1 or 0. But remember, if you did configure it for 0, you will definitely need to connect the USB power before you can access the user interface. Time zone and geolocation is used to automatically configure the device. As you can see, I did manage to configure it to find my location by detect, but it didn't pick up the approximate geolocation, which doesn't matter for this device. Device name and channel name can be used to configure and give this device either a room name or, for example, use name. So it can be either kitchen, for example, if you are putting it in the kitchen, or sync light if you are using this button to control sync light. Firmware update allows you to see if there is a new version available, but also to download and install it. Factory set resets device to factory settings. Device reboot just reboots device. Device discoverable is used to make device discoverable or not on your network. I always leave my devices on. And device info gives you information about the device, such as device ID, SSID it is correctly connected to, the signal of the Wi-Fi, enable debugging and also download of the log files. What we need to configure for the Home Assistant integration is located inside Internet and Security, as it is also for other devices. Wi-Fi mode you did set up previously, but you also have here option to defy a client backup. This one can be used as a backup access point if, for example, signal from the first one is lost. You can, but you do not have to configure it. Wi-Fi reconnect can be used to trigger to connect to the access point that has the maximum signal. Wi-Fi mode is not needed. It allows you to connect directly to your button, but we really do not need Then I don't know what would be the reason for using this one. Restrict login can be used to assign username and password for login to the device, but I'm never using that, so even this time I will not be using it. SMTP server is used to connect to the time server, in this example to Google time server. And I don't know why it is used, because it never ever, in more than 6 months I have it, picked up the time. Advanced developer settings is something that we need for Home Assistant integration. And there are two ways to integrate it. One is to enable COIoT, and the other one is to enable MQTT. If you plan to use internal Home Assistant integration, you have to define this one here. In order to use Shelly CO IoT integration, you do have to change some things here. First, we have to enable CO IoT. Then, we have to change this from multicast and type here the IP address of our Home Assistant with specific port 192.168.1.200. And the port is 5683. By enabling this IP address of Home Assistant and the port, we are telling Shelly device to uh, not use multicast anymore, but instead go for unicast. Of course, we now have to save. Mind you, when you save the changes, the next thing you have to do is restart your device. But let me first configure MQTT and then we will restart the device. To enable MQTT, you have to check or tick this box, insert your username and password for MQTT, of course, if you are using them, if not, leave empty, type in the IP address of your MQTT server with the port, it can be either 1883, which is default port, or any port that you configured on your own configuration. The rest of the settings can be left alone. Let's press save, although we didn't do anything here. If you plan to use a Shelly device through the Shelly app and allow external access, you need to enable cloud. But none of the devices I have from Shelly have this enabled, so I will not be enabling this one too. Actions are what this button sees and can sense. It can be short press, long press, two time short press or three time short press. We do not have to do anything here inside the configuration. Instead, we will configure everything from inside the Home Assistant. But for what this can be used? If you, for example, do not have Home Assistant or you want to initiate something else, you can use this button short pressed URL to be called when the button is pressed. 
For example, this can be used to trigger webhook or Synology and change state from surveillance station from home to away, or something like that. But as I said, for this we will be using Home Assistant. So we are done here. Let's go to settings. And as I mentioned, we have to reboot the device. And device is now rebooted. We can now go to Home Assistant. Inside Home Assistant, depending on the type of the integration you are using, you may or may not receive notification that the button has been discovered. Let's see notifications, nothing here. Let's go to configuration, integrations, and depending on type of the integration you are using, if it's MQTT, device should already be visible here. Shelly button, and these are all the entities we can get from this device. Let me add this to Lovelace, fun stuff. But let's see what we see inside Home Assistant if we are using internal Home Assistant integration. For that, let's go to Integrations, Shelly Smart Home Configuration, Devices, and let's search here for button. Here it is. Unfortunately, this is all I currently get from this integration. Add to Lovelace, fun stuff. Add to Lovelace UI. Let's quickly go to Lovelace UI. In the UI, this is what we see from the sensor, if we are using MQTT and if we are using switch. If I were to press once, you see that we have one short press. And this one also should have changed and detected the turn on state. If I double click, we see double short push, triple click, and one long push, this one, which is a great thing. We do not have one single switch that then has attributes single, double, triple, or long push. Instead, we have four switches, and it's much easier now to add them to our automations. So let's go to automations and see what we can do with all of this. Automations, add automation, start with empty automation. We will call this Shelly button and now we will play with states first will be short push to on we will call this single so we are now detecting the state of the binary sensor shelly button short push and when it turns to on we will define this as trigger id single then Let's repeat this for other three states. Once again, state, let's call this double, entity double short push to on. Then we have trigger state triple, triple on. And the last one will be state long long on. So we have now defined four triggers inside this integration. First trigger is single when there is one short push, double for two short pushes, triple for three short pushes, and long for long push we now can create actions. But for this, we have to first select choose, so we can define additional options. First option, let's say condition, will be trigger, and we will be using single. When we have a single push, let's say that I want to turn this light off. Add action, call service, light, toggle, because we don't know if it's on or off. And I will pick entity, Elgato, key light, this one here. I think that this one is this here. We don't want to do anything. We said that we want only to toggle it. Next option, add condition, trigger, double, add action, call service, light, toggle, entity, 
Elgato, this one here. This should be this one, but maybe I mix them. Additional option can be triple click, add condition, trigger, triple click, and the action will be to turn the LED here on my desk. Call service, light, toggle, pick entity. Let's say that this is this light here. And the last option, if I do a long press, I want to turn everything off. Add option, add condition, trigger, long, add action, call service, light, turn off, and we now add entities. So we will be adding Elgato. Elgato W LED. And that's it. Let's press save now. And see if it works. If I long press, lights are turned off. If I press once, the light should turn on. If I double press, this light should turn on. And if I press three times, the LED strip, the LED strip turned on on my desk. And that's it, how you create automation for the Shelly button. Of course, with this new trigger ID, you are not limited to only four options. You can add more. For example, let's say that I want to create a new option. Condition will be trigger single. But I add additional condition on this, and let's say that this can be sun. If it's after sunrise and before sunset, I can create a different action. For example, call service, text to speech, clock me, please subscribe and save. So anybody who now presses this button between the sunrise and sunset will not just get this light turned off, but it also will hear message from my speaker, like this. Please subscribe. So yeah, but this didn't work from the first time and this is just the magic of editing video. If I were to use this integration, how I showed you here, the condition one wouldn't be triggered because it goes after the first trigger has been triggered. So if you plan to have multiple actions for a single trigger ID, make sure that your first action is with the condition. Only if it's not met, then the second trigger ID, the same trigger ID would be triggered. And this is it. I really do hope that you did enjoy this video and that you find it useful. If you have any kind of a comment or question, you can always find me on the Discord server and the link is down in the description of the video. But also feel free to leave comment down in the comment section below. If you did like this video, please give me a thumbs up because it not just means a lot to me, but it also helps with the YouTube algorithms. If you still haven't subscribed, please subscribe and hit the bell button so you get notified on the future videos, but also so you don't miss my streams. And they are pretty rare. And I'll be seeing you next time. Until then, bye bye and have fun.